What's going on, y'all? It's Rev, and welcome back to another Dauntless video. We got some three ginger tea. We're coming back at it. We're back on the grind. We're going to be doing blaze patrols and catching up our Hellion gear to be kind of where we're at currently because you can see that in the previous episode I wasn't using I didn't replace my Hellion armor even though I crafted the pieces that I wanted I didn't put it on immediately even though it does have some pretty nice perks and and it's what I'm going to be changing into in in a moment but I'm I still am valuing the the pluses over the perks currently in my armor so it's that time of the day again I am going to go to the core breaker after I take a drink here And we're gonna see what we can do we're gonna see what kind of mastery and stuff we got you know we might not be getting lucky or very lucky on our on ourselves we got very lucky with that overpower plus two energize is pretty nice uh i believe we have another plus two that we could utilize and we have a few daily login cores i've been picking those up um on the days that I do or don't play. Nice. We got a these are two really strong cells, so that's nice. Definitely be picking up those daily daily cores. Tons of stuff for new players in there. Do a silver slayer core. I'll be get a nice plus two here. What do we get? Plus one predator, plus two lucent, plus one rage hunter. Yo, we've gotten a few rage hunters. I'm digging on that. Uh let's see, what do we have here? Um, so we have a fair amount of cores, and the shop rolls in 22 hours. That's good to know. And you know what else takes 22 hours? Is a, uh, a cell combination of a plus one, plus one variety. And I'm staring at this uh, two, two Rage Hunter that I have. That is... So I have two overpowers as well. I could get a plus three, but actually this forms up plus four. So I'm going to wait. I'm not going to be using these. We'll do the Rage Hunter. We'll get an additional plus two Rage Hunter. And I know exactly where that's going to be going in my gear. Let's see. Where are we at now? We're going to be farming some more Blaze Patrols. Because we need those fire orbs. That is the first order of business. We have the ability to fight. We actually have the ability to patrol Hellion. So if we get, we could go two for one, uh, you know, two birds, one stone, and get Hellion in the Blaze Patrol. And this is honestly the optimal way. Uh, I didn't know that we would be able to patrol Hellion after feeding it so soon. But it seems like they get added to the pool immediately. So I just kind of learned something. Now, that means. You might get Ember Main, which I'll use a different weapon if we do, because I don't want to just keep this sword. Um, we have a Pike. We did uh, Charog with the Pike, and Pike is a good matchup for my boy Charog. So we'll go ahead and do that. I don't see why not. Go ahead and do the Pike. Pike again versus Charog. Should be fun. It's a shame I couldn't get more Ice Weapons, but... We dumped a lot into our swords. That's all right. Another arid, arid map. I like, like I said in the last video, I really like these arid maps. I think they're uh, good for resources. They have some of the best resources that are close to the spawn, and you just don't really need to detour too much. This map, little big, little big, little too big. All right, it's not over there, so we're gonna hug the left get those mushrooms you can get that phoenix opal i'm not gonna do it it takes a little bit too long for me to uh to gather them all up but we also get some additional resources when we patrol and this is kind of the glory of patrols you know you don't know what you're gonna get but you're gonna always be getting the the orbs which are totally worth it because we have patrol chests so we're gonna be getting 20 orbs every single time and then we also get the bonus resources that are a part of that part of that patrol. And then we get all the break parts on top of that for whatever we're fighting. And sometimes we just don't need. Sometimes we just don't need those those parts. 
from the thing that we're fighting because we're not crafting that gear or really going for any of those weapons or we're, they're just i mean there 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 are points where those pieces just might not be good and so it feels like a waste but the orbs are always worth it so there's that get my attack speed going boom charog 10 times nice get a little bit of war pike mastery maybe a level up yep behemoth mastery nice i'm gonna load up a shot and fire on that a thousand damage right there it's not bad now you can note this time i didn't spec into savagery i didn't equip the um the savagery set like i did last time and that's all right you know you don't need savagery to play the war pike it is good it is very good but you can also operate with uh you know perks you'd use on other weapons so it this makes the war pike very um versatile in that sense where you know savagery is very good it is you know its main mechanic is wounds but you know wounds are really only for breaking parts and uh and you and the use of savagery but i don't have savagery so i'm just you know i'm i'm going i'm wounding parts so i can break them because i want the breaks but i'm not really utilizing them for you know additional damage so playing around my build it doesn't really require too much more of me i just it changes my game plan a little bit i can just kind of lean into charog whenever i want i don't need to be wounding additional parts um after i have a, a set amount once i feel comfortable and, and just like laying down the dps i can't i'm gonna get away and roll through Break that flame sack go for the head next maybe we'll get a ko maybe not the the stagger damage on or pike is pretty low actually i'm gonna go for this other flame sack got it go for the head now hopefully get the break before the ko which we do and um there are some attacks that you might see me doing so if we have a little bit of stamina on the war pike and we're sprinting and then we hold the light attack we'll do that charge and that that charge does really good um, wounding damage. And it also allows you to kind of maneuver. And now that Charog's running, I'll, uh, I'll demonstrate a little bit better. So it drains your stamina really fast. So that's the first thing you need to know. But you can also like, you know, race car around. You know, you can put the anime stripes on that and running in the 90s. But the War Pike has a few tricks up its sleeve. Most of them cost a lot of stamina, and that's kind of like the main drawback of the weapon, but they're working on it. The War Pike needs a little bit more love, in my opinion. I'm gonna roll to the side here. Kind of in Charog's belly. It's gonna enrage. That's all right. I haven't really used a uh, pot yet, so we'll go ahead and stay healthy. I don't want to go down because I want that bonus loot. shock proc now the thing about overpower that you guys need to know and why it's so good is because not only it says staggered but the staggered state is whenever you get a break whenever you get a ko or a shock proc or an interrupt so overpower arguably one of the if not the strongest cell in the game it's what defines the meta currently it is a stagger meta and is probably the most important cell in all of the weapons arsenal. So when, if I can get a stagger or a shock, not only is the behemoth enraged, I'm also able to stack the overpower that is within my gear set. So I'm just looking to stack as many benefits as possible when it comes to dealing damage. I might actually die. Oh, I'm out of stamina, shucks. So we have three revives. That's a that's a shame. We 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 actually died right when right before it was about to die. But uh, didn't have the, enough stamina to roll. Can can caught up in the talking. That's all right. We uh we'll take that L. We're gonna lose out on a little bit of gear. We missed out on one piece of uh, extra gear, but we got twenty orbs, and that's ultimately what we're after. We have, uh, oh, I needed one more wound. 
with the warp pike. Dang. Aether orbs collect 30 blaze orbs while on a patrol hunt. It's almost like they're telling us to craft this, <laughs> this Hellion gear. So that's nice. Um, probably just do this next blaze patrol with the sword. Warp pike's kind of taking a long time when it comes to the hunt times and I don't have the resources to make a frost weapon. I don't want to waste too much time patrolling. I would rather progress the quests so you guys can kind of see more strategies on different behemoths. We fought Charog and unfortunately we haven't gotten Ember Main yet and that's a behemoth that really teaches a, a really nice fundamental that I greatly value and you guys should learn. Um, what can we do here if we do get Ember Main? I'll craft one of these. Probably do like the fall of the shrike. That'll be fine. That'll be fine. We got a bounty done. Go ahead and claim that. That's going to help with our hunt pass. We have frost patrols, hunt six behemoths with repeaters, get three staggers while a behemoth is enraged. We'll do that one because if we do get ember main, then it's going to be in a world of hurt. That'll be fun. Light of fire would be nice. We can do that. Uh, normal blaze behemoth with a frost weapon. We've already done that. And we'll do, be doing the other one with Pangar and Hellion Sword. Combat Alchemy will be... We just need one more wound. 5x5, five five, we need the axe and hammer. Hopefully we can do the hammer. Mm. Nene, Carabag, Stormclaw. Have a, we'll probably take a while to do this one. Frosted tailplate from Pangar should be easy. Oh, this one is uh this one gives a die silver offense core. That's really nice. Definitely want to be going for that. This one just wants us to patrol a whole bunch, so you know, sign me up, right? This is basically two patrols if we have the uh if we have the uh patrol chests. So a lot of these quests are dang, we keep getting Charog. That sucks. That sucks. A lot of those quests are going to just get done passively. And that's, and honestly, this is Dauntless. This is what, um, you know, patrolling is a large part of the, the gameplay loop and getting all those uh, resources and, and mainly the orbs to upgrade all of that gear to plus five and plus six, I believe, is where we're going to cap out at. And then we have to start doing dire patrols, which are the harder behemoths. The, uh, let's see, let's find this Charog. I didn't check the right, and so I might, this might be a blunder, but I'm going for the Wrath War, and hopefully, yep, it's front and center, which is nice. Uh, I didn't make a mistake. Calculated, I could say. I'm just that big brain. Get the Wrath War. Always gathering, you know, on the way, at least. You know, I don't really, if I'm playing in a group, I don't really take time to, you know, have everybody fight the behemoth while while I'm gathering stuff. Um, I think that's poor etiquette, but um, what I will typically do is I calculate, like, I, I, I formulate a route that seems to yield the, the, the things that I want, and not every map is going to have a, a, a good... Path. but that path i will always take that path even if it's like inoptimal to get to the to the behemoth so i'll take a little bit of time right to do a little bit of gathering get the stuff that i need and it really depend depends if i uh depends if i need it if i don't need it then you know i'll just run to the behemoth and i won't really care so if i'm hurting for consumables sure why not This is the power of a elemental affinity as well. I'm just getting a lot more damage in. You know, I was using a plus three war pike versus a, uh, a plus four ice sword. The extra power on that from the ice is uh, nothing to scoff at. Really leaning into these parts here, not getting as many breaks because I don't have the wounds. But Charog is also almost half dead. So that's in the time that 
you know, I, it takes me to kill it with the war pike. I'm able to lean into it pretty hard and maybe even possibly kill kill two charogs with the sword and get less breaks. So it's up to you to, to say what's worth it. Then again, I didn't really optimize my build. This build is pretty optimized for sword right now. Break this arm. Nice. Go for the stagger, and it should be dead here. You see how Charog can get really bullied once you have the ability and the damage to uh, get the consecutive breaks. The the flame sacks on the, in the shoulder area uh, break really really easy, and that's a good way to snowball the fight. Uh, an additional, uh, another good thing about Charog actually is when we get those breaks, we get additional orbs. So you can see I got 13. Uh, so somewhere along the line, I got additional flame orbs or blaze orbs from breaking parts. Mm, looking pretty good. We'll see what we can do, uh, with our Hellion weapon and maybe we'll just kind of upgrade all of our stuff all in one go. We got a hunt pass level up. We got a bounty completed. So we're going to hit P on the keyboard. Claim our rewards. We got some plat. It's nice. We got 50 plat. I don't think I can really get anything for 50 plat immediately. But that's in our pocket. Just for playing the game. Patrolling. Ain't no big thing. I need to draft another bounty. This is one thing that new players will probably forget to do quite frequently. Is um, actually draft bounties when once they complete them. I still do it to this very day and it is very annoying hopefully hopefully where are we at show me probably not going to be able to upgrade all of our armor but all right we need more hellion parts anyway and that looks like five tails scorch sails no good is that scorch stone hellion if that's scorch stone hellion that's totally fine scorch sail a rare drop from slaying scorch stone hellion okay so Already, it wants us to fight Dire Hellion, which is totally fine. But we're going to upgrade our armor. Hopefully to a point that is meaningful. All right, the helmet is good to equip. However, the chest is not... So what we're going to do is actually keep on because we're going to be going to fight Pangar regardless. And Pangar is going to deal a lot of extra damage to fire armor. I'm going to sub out my Ember Main helmet for this Rage Hunter. Uh, plus two Rage Hunter, by the way. Um, Hellion helmet. That'll, that'll take extra damage. But you know what's going to cover us is the resist bonus resistance from the Boreas. Uh, armor that we are currently wearing so we'll uh we'll go ahead and sub some stuff out i might even keep i might not even equip it yet see we got two two power slots that's really good and we have five overpowered that's so good so good really great um let's see regardless of where I'm at with all these plus ones. Don't I have plus two evasive fury from this? No, I gotta upgrade once more. Let's see, let's look at our this requires what? Bloodfire? Yeah, smolder smoldering bloodfire hide. Bloodfire amber main. Hmm. I'm learning. So anything beyond plus five, we need dyers. So getting to plus five is kind of like we're kind of maxed out right now for the current point of the game. And it really just wants us to patrol and get and get suited up for those dyers. Which this Hellion sword is more than enough for me. So let's uh let's progress. Let's uh let's take this newfound power and uh go beat us up a a Pangar really fast. This will be uh this will be a lot of fun. Um in the previous episode I was talking about how how long I've been playing Dauntless. I've been playing for, uh, just to kind of recap, I've been playing for almost three years. This summer will be uh, three years. And I actually got partnered with the game um, roughly about 
four months into me streaming, which was, I want to say like April or May. I think I, I think it was May of last year. So I've been partnered for quite some time, a little over a year, you know, year and some, actually almost two years now, which is uh, pretty cool. Dauntless is, honestly, it's changed my life. I've met a lot of really cool people uh, through the, the partner program, made lifelong friends and yeah, this game, like it, it's kind of, it's kind of weird to say that Dauntless has, uh, changed my life and that it's been, um, a hell of a ride, honestly. It, you know, Dauntless isn't, it's not the most immaculate game, but it's also, it, it's, it has one of the best communities I've ever been a part of. And I like to think that, you know, I, I had a small little portion of that and uh, that makes me happy so dauntless has brought a lot of joy into my life i guess is what i'm trying to say um and uh yeah i mean i can't really trade that for anything you know if you're watching this video it's kind of just testament that you know i'm doing what makes me happy anyway let's talk about pangar um pangar is a big boy Hangar is a very big boy. However, the same strategy for Hellion applies. We're going to be on the outside of the legs. We have our fire weapon. Swapping sides. Going to go for the other leg. I'm going to get hit here because I was not patient enough. Another thing you should probably uh, consider doing. That headbutt attack just roll through the head. It looks like you can't really pass through it, but I'm gonna roll to the side on the tail flip. I'm underneath Pangar. I want to get out of there ASAP. Roll backwards. I roll backwards again. Roll the side. Just working on the legs. You can see we got the, the KO. I'm going to go for the tail here. We have overdrive. I'm going to pop my lantern. Get some attack speed. Uh, attempt to get the tail. Nice. On the lantern now we're gonna it's gonna enrage it's gonna trigger my rage hunter immediately gonna knock it over I'm gonna go for the face here pop in my overdrive some attack speed strike lantern's actually carrying a lot of my attack speed burdens that i uh tend to run into on the sword. I like having a little bit of attack speed on the sword. It's not necessary, but it does feel good. You can see that Pangar is just like wasting a lot of time trying to enrage. Maybe it uses a couple attacks, a couple stomps. You know, just get good at rolling the stomps. Once you get good at the stomps, it's pretty easy at that point. Once you learn like which directions you need to roll. So take the time to like focus on your dodge, you know, when it's not feeling super hectic um that was an interruptible attack when pangar starts rolling i, I call it the roly-poly um when it starts doing the roly-poly attack you can hit it uh you know a hammer can blast away at it it's pretty hard to do with the sword it's a little bit more of an advanced tech but you can use a warp pike shot you can use the hammer you can use um the, or the hammer blast you can use the chain blade uh, dash that I taught you in the earlier episode with Scrave. That same technique will work by just kind of dashing into Pangar and hitting the light attack. But that was a uh, that was a Pangar hunt, and you can see that the same strategy for Hellion went into play there. So I didn't really need to talk too much about like they share a lot of the same move set, and they're just kind of slightly augmented. And that's honestly all you need to know is go for the legs you know, uh, really uh, capitalize on the amount of time that it spends on the ground. And that can be hammered into the uh, the behemoth by bringing overpower. And overpower, <sighs> I feel like it needs to get nerfed, but you know, I'm not, I'm not a dev. I'm not here to balance the game. I'm just here to teach people how to play and have fun. So we did hot shots and cold feats which was part of the quest line for, uh, I be believe it's launched the barrage. And we have another quest right here, melting the ice, which is the blaze weapon and frost weapon. Gonna give us a few more orbs. 
Ooh, skull cracker science. Gather a fractal eye tooth from Dress Head. Gather a charred brow plate from Hellion's Head and an icy brow plate from Pangar's Head. We get a bronze slayer core from that. That's nice. Let's see. How long have we been going here? 25 minutes. We can do one more. We'll do one more hunt. I believe we'll do one more. Uh, we'll actually just go and kill Drask in our current gear. Because we're feeling confident. We got a few more blaze orbs. And the thing about Drask is we've kind of already fought it. The lesser Drask doesn't have any different moves that the normal Drask does. So we're at an advantage there. We already know what the Drask is going to do. Maybe I'll take the time to show off our brand new gear. Because we did upgrade. This gives us four Rage Hunter as well. Hmm. I need that Power Socket though. We'll just equip the helmet for now. This plus one predator isn't going to do too much for us. It's 4% damage, though. It, but if I do get hit, then I'm going to lose that 4% damage. That's kind of how predator works. It's a little bit more of a higher skill cap, but it's only 4% damage. So you're not going to need it. It's not going to make or break this hunt. It is a Drask. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about Drask because the lesser Drask doesn't really pose too much of a threat because the breaks happen quite frequently. And because of that, you don't really get to see a lot of its moveset. Um, so practicing the dodging is um, just not as beneficial. But we'll talk. We'll, we'll still talk about the, the Drask. The thing about fighting Drask is fighting Drask solo is significantly harder than it is fighting in a group. And the reason for that is, is because Drask always tries to have you in front of it which caused the tail to rotate and the tail is kind of the prize of the Drask. If you want to slow down the Drask and make it a little bit less um, ambiguous, meaning that uh, the attacks are a little bit easier to read and, and it, it's, uh, it's a little bit more predictable, cutting the tail means that it can't use its tail attacks and the, the, the tail attacks are the ambiguous ones. But we have the sword, we have really high mobility. Roll this laser. That took me forever to learn how to dodge correctly. So what I'm doing is I'm going to go for the head. I'm going to create an opening and then I'm going to go for the tail just like Pangar or, you know, the, the tail's right here presented to me. So I'll go for it. Sure. If you present it, I will go for it. But the main thing I'm trying to do is go for the head. There's my opening. I quickly dash over to the tail. Something that really only the, uh, the sword can do, but I mean... Boom, there goes the tail. Now I've finished the head because I've already put damage in on it. I'm not leaving without that break. I'm not leaving that break on the tail. When uh, Drass does that charge and you're very, very close, you can, uh, you can just roll through. Rolling through behemoth attacks is a very, very, very important thing to learn. Don't run away from behemoths. That was a kind of weird thing. His body went up on the rock. Let's see, picking up it. I know that Drask likes to swipe with those claws. This is the, the attack that it does instead of the tail sweep. Was that body slam? Very slow, leaves him wide open. Another claw swipe, but I'm out of stamina, so I can't really roll. But I am in overdrive, and my mod me and my mod tells me that I don't get knocked down in this state. So I'm kind of just tanking at this point. It's almost staggered. I'm just kind of playing it by ear. When I see it Drask lift up its claw, I kind of just stop attacking at that point. And I'll uh I'll be ready to roll. That's another thing. Uh probably one of the most important and hardest things to condition yourself to not do in a game like Dauntless is to make it so you're not mashing. Every single, like I wish I could show my, I, I don't really have a setup where I can show how my my hand is, you know, how I'm clicking on the mouse. But maybe I, uh, you can see that I'm not just like, you know, I'm not just mashing into the, 
into the mouse every every action that i take is a deliberate action and you'll see me um stop a lot at this current point instead of just you know mashing like i normally do i actually will wait during the light attacks to see if uh the behemoth is going to give me time uh before i lock myself in because once i do this spin i'm locked into it and i have a, lo a lot of recovery time and so that's a good stopping point a uh, good tip for all you sword players out there you know don't don't take uh make ever, make all your actions deliberate and you'll take less damage i guarantee it you know even if that means they're like oh you know i can only get two hits here and then i'm gonna see and wait you know i still get hit because i'm a nerd but uh i'm gonna you know wait here i don't want to get body slammed i'm gonna wait and then i run to the part that i want to hit right i have a i have a strategy in my head and eventually it becomes muscle memory and that's what makes you a better player is developing that muscle memory and a lot of people don't want to you know if you're just playing to relax more power to you um i personally like to play games like me me unwinding means i'm you know i'm trying to get better at a at a game or i'm trying to i think of it a little bit like why do, why do i play chess i'm not trying to go pro in chess but i like to try and strategize and you know make something out of it because that's an yeah, I don't know. That's just what I like to do personally. If you're different, if you're different, it's totally fine. But that's kind of how I play, and it's also how I'm gonna teach. Oof! I'm gonna take damage there because I didn't have any stam. Popping my flask, or yeah, my healing flask, because I don't want to go down because I want the bonus loot. Cutting that tail, oh, this is the Dean Rage. That does a lot of damage, uh, by the way. Does a lot of damage when it does that stomp. When you see that leg get lifted up, you get out of dodge. That's uh, probably its most damaging attack next to the laser. But the laser, it doesn't really use the laser too much. Might be running, or it actually ran already, I believe. Should be almost dead. Drass actually has a lot more health than I uh, anticipated. Drass, uh, as a fun fact, used to be a much earlier, and this was like the this was the original first kind of pub stomper. Drask. it was um, it was much earlier, but you didn't have any shock gear, uh, shock gear at the time, and so you would roll up in whatever armor you had, and you'd just get shocked nonstop and. And you'd have to deal with it you didn't have any way to get the best way to counter drask was to hope you can beat drask get the armor and then go farm it with the armor so that was like your best chance of survival as a as a noob in the early alpha days that was a lot of fun i really like drask and as a fun fact the dire version of drask is not in the game yet so this is technically the strongest version of drask but thunder deep drask was in the alpha and you know thunder deep drask I'm hoping that Thunderdeep Drask isn't in the game for a reason right now. I hope Thunderdeep Drask, they, they bring it all the way back and make uh, Thunderdeep a very special behemoth, like a raid boss or something. That'd be so cool. That would be so cool. All right, we finished. I, I totally just ran past Cat. We finished Heralds of the Storm. Let's go. That's so cool. Uh, really fast quest if you can get the Hellion gear and mainly the Hellion weapons under your belt. You're going to want to craft. Um, I'm going to visit the repeaters just because we haven't really been touching them too much in this playthrough. Dire warnings. This is the big boy quest. This is when the game starts opening up to you and you start fighting the harder behemoths, the harder versions. And um, we still have more behemoths that we've never even seen before on top of the harder versions of the stuff that we've already fought. You can see Firebrand Charog, Ragetail Nasher, Moon Reaver Shrike, Rockfall Skarn. Before the Dawn and Bring on the Night, which are Valamir and Riftstalker. Riftstalker is a pub stomper. Um, craft all our gear to 350 and 350. Once you get to 350, we get Escalation unlocked. This is where the game starts. And so I'm excited to get into this. We're gonna dig into it uh, the best we can. A lot. Moving forward, the 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 further episodes are going to be more uh, patrols and more talking. It's going to be more lax, and um, yeah, it's just going to be a lot of fun. 
talk a little bit more about Dauntless. And, uh, you know, now's a good time. If you're in the comment section and you're watching this portion, if you have any questions about, like, any lore, any, any like, past stuff, how did, you know, how or any questions for myself, now's a good time because uh, they're good conversation pieces and I have no problem answering those uh, if they're, you know, not too personal. But thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, please leave a like. If uh, you want to support the channel, subscribe and uh, use, <laughs> I always forget this part, use creator code RevyRed in the Dauntless in-game store or the Epic Games store. Uh, I stream a lot on Twitch. You can hit me up there and uh, check out the stream. We don't always play Dauntless. Um, I'm trying to incorporate, like I said in uh, past videos, uh, I really like fighting games. I'm trying to incorporate them more. I'm really excited for uh, Grand Blue Fantasy Versus, uh, which is coming out next year. And uh, I... I want to get into Tekken, but I haven't played since Tekken 4, and I don't really know where to start. So if you're a Tekken god, maybe come give me tips. Uh, that's going to do it. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you on the Shattered Isles.